sisters, the Lord our God is about to speak to his people. Open your eyes, your ears, your mind, and your heart to receive the message he has for you this day. Thank you. 
chapter 7, verse 9, and 14 read to 17. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship Him day and night in His temple. The one who sits on His throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Word of the Lord.
Good morning, church. Our Lord is good. And all the time. The readings we have today now give us a lot of joy that someone has our back, not only once, but God is always there for us. That God is the good shepherd who is always there for the flock, and the flock hear his voice and follow him. If you keep quiet for a moment, God is silent for a moment. You might listen and hear maybe the little noises from the little kids in the church. Their kinsmen, they saw Jesus as 
the son of uh, Joseph, the poor carpenter. Is the mother not Mary, this woman here, who is uh, always with us? And they said it was necessary. It was necessary that we needed to leave the Jews and take the good news to the Gentiles. And that we found that it was a warming thing, a joyful thing, a good news to the Gentiles. That the word of God came to them even though traditionally they were not meant to receive the blessings of Abraham. It was necessary. I want you to repeat the word necessary. Yes. Say it again, necessary. Yes. And there are some things in your life that are really necessary that you needed to uphold. And there are some things, some knowledge, some information that you needed to know. Yes. If you want to go to the bank to pick up your uh, little money, you needed to have a passport. Is that not true? Yes. And I tell you, It was necessary for us to be. What and what in our lives, in your life and in my life, will really expel the Holy Spirit in our lives? That will expel the peace of God in our environment. That will expel the joy of love in our relationship. What is that that will not make the Word of God uncomfortable it is therefore necessary, and that was why I'm trying to say that it was necessary that I sent my son. It was necessary that my son came to live like any other human being. It was necessary that my son will suffer. It was necessary that my son will die. It was necessary that my son will shed the blood on the cross. It was necessary that he will get what rise again. So that you And now when I visited there, he 
activity as the case may be. He noticed with uh, great joy that something was happening. There was communication between the shepherd and the flock. Now he called one shepherd and asked him, how do you do it? How do you differentiate your own flock from the flock of other people? In the sheepfold, it's just like uh, in the farm, there is a fence right now that will really accommodate up to 1,000 sheep. Yours might be 50, mine might be 30, and yours might be 100, another person 200. At the end of the day, they're all going to back into that sheepfold. But in the morning, each shepherd will come, have a contact with the other sheep, and now his own sheep will follow him. If you have done it, then he will follow you. It was like a magic. He now was observing. And he observed one shepherd that had up to 200 sheep. He was calling, speaking in Arabic, Mara, Mara, Mara. When you give me the heart, Mara, you notice the sheep. They were all on the, on the ground. They were all got up and uh, lined up. And they were coming out of uh, the sheep. Uh, get there following the, uh, the shipman. You know, I wanted to try it out. I said, now you see, is your friend now to bring out your own flock? Can I, can I call them? It's a simple thing I can uh, usually call my man and they'll come out. And I uh, use uh, the English accent. And now I call Mara, Mara, Mara. You know, the voice of the shepherd is different. The voice of the father, the voice of the man and mother. When it is the voice of the mother that will say, stop crying, my child, I will call you. Once you hear the voice of the mother, the voice of the daddy, you will simply keep quiet because you feel with the presence of daddy and our mommy, you find out the world was complete for me. Oh, I will buy you an airplane. The child believes that the mother, the father was the human here. Because of the voice, the tenderness, the love, the caring, and all the connection that now goes in between, you find out immediately the shepherd calls. The, 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 the flock will always listen. Because we are exposed to different distractions, a lot of things now prove to be like uh, the voice, but they are not. And that is why it is so beautiful when we gather here in different parts in the choir. We hear the first part, the second part, the third part, the fourth part. They are all there singing. And it's just like music. It's like an organized noise. When I make noise, and that person does ta, 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 ta. And if we combine them together, you find that ti, 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 ta, ta, ta. you know, you see, it becomes a beautiful pop sound and uh, it really becomes uh, vibrating and touchy. But once we are singing out of the choir, we find out that our voice will no longer blend into a melody. That is how life is. With voice is calling you. With voice attracts you. With voice is distracting you. Which voice do you always listen to? Maybe the time when I get weary and hungry, maybe the long one calls you and tells you to take it easy. It's gonna be fine. Don't you see the voice of God around you at that moment of your life? Or you feel you must be pretty considered and do it your own way, do it the way you want it, must be my own way or the highway. Many a time we enter into error when it must be my own way and not the way of God. Five other qualities now distinguish our Lord Jesus Christ as the good shepherd. One, Jesus Christ tells us that he is good. I am the good shepherd. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 17. Secondly, Jesus is the one who protects. He protects his own. I give them the eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. As we read in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 28. Now, Jesus also has a top quality. Guidance, he guides us always. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
as we read in Psalm 23, verse 3. Jesus also not, not just us. He will turn his mouth like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his hands. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. In the prophet Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. Finally, Jesus also provides, and that is exactly what we need to do, always to grow in our faith. He lays down his life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus is good. Always there, leading a good example. Yes. And he is the one who never, never leaves his uh, a flock untended. Remember, even when he was on the cross, yeah. he did not leave humanity alone. Forgive. He now said, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. We think there is nothing that he will not really pay attention to. He will be the person when the materials, the black beggar will be there talking, Jesus, son of a uh, uh, son of David, how can be a man? Now Jesus connects with your root. He called son of David, son of my father. You are one of my own. You are one of my friend. You are one of my language. You are one of my color. You are one of my brain. You are one of my family. And Jesus did not. Even with all the crowd moving around him, he listened. He paid attention. God will pay attention to you in every situation and circumstance of your life. Really be a 
second half, none could generate joy for Adam. Joy came in the planet of humanity only when women surfaced into the world. And yet Adam now goes up and says, Oh Lord, now this is the flesh of my flesh and the word of my bone. And from that time, even, you know, there was a joke that was saying that, you know, between you and men and women, uh, who is more important? And when, uh, who is more intelligent? Between the man and the woman. And you know, the woman said, the woman is more intelligent than a man. Okay. Now, who else can give us an answer? Is it a man or a woman that is more intelligent? What? A woman? I know. The men who are here, you have to be careful because there's something you say, you know, you're going to have fun today, okay? Today is the day, you must be women, okay? Good. So I'm supporting the men, so that you don't say something that like you go home and you wouldn't have lunch, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now, women are very intelligent. Amen. Now, look at the dialogue between Eve and Satan. Satan came. Why did Satan not go to the man? A man is, he thinks about his trade. God said that we should not do this. And now Satan came with uh, an option. He said that you don't eat this fruit because if you eat it, you will be like God. Oh my goodness. Women are always very intelligent. Now they are looking, they are fascinated by big stuff. Who oh, would be like God? That would be good for me. If we are like God, we means my husband will be the king, I will be the king. My husband will be the president, and I will be the first lady. That was not a wrong ambition. But any ambition you have that is not in God is a wrong ambition. to us is only when we are obedient to his world. 
for those who are, if you check here in America, in our, in our addresses, how many black priests do we have? Yes, you can talk about that. Oh, that priest is that. Oh, they did this or did that. How many converts contributed to the training of a seminarian? We have our seminary at City Hall University. Can someone say, everyone, I will donate five dollars, ten dollars towards the training of the good priests? Yes, please. 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 They are praying for us and interceding for us. It is your duty, my duty, our responsibility to make sure that it was necessary to bring the word of God to those people who haven't read the land, have, have, have the word of God, to bring it to the Gentiles, to the poor and non-trained. Let us therefore thank God in a special way for the great opportunity and privilege to receive the word of God and for the blessing of motherhood with the ideas that are given to our mother Mary and through which and we all of us have been renowned again through the baptism waters of baptism. Let us therefore thank God for the motherhood of the church that continues to bring forth people of grace, noble people, all the saints, as we see in the second reading from the book of Revelation. Do you know all these? These are all the people who have really survived temptation and God will wipe away all their tears. They
my dear friends, we have a good shepherd who is so kind, merciful, loving and generous. He is constantly there and he tells us that nothing, even Satan, evil or any danger can never snatch us away from him. We are protected and provided for. Let us therefore trust in the resurrection of our world and with the power of the resurrection continue to show and shine in our faith to the greater glory of God and for our own sanctification. Through Christ alone. 